Hello guys, this tutorial is about how to create long hairs and uh, the workflow, there are multiple workflows and uh, some people can achieve really high quality results but I think uh, if you want to be really uh, having really good result it's gonna take time uh, and patience but what I'm gonna show you today will be the easiest way I think uh, to control uh, the proper shape but just keep in mind that that's not the only workflow and you can always look for other workflows uh, like uh, Maya's uh, X-Gene um, and uh, Maya's N-Hair or Maya's, um, uh, sorry, Air, or other plugins like uh, Shave and Haircut. So it's up to you, but uh, the workflow I'm introducing you today will be the, uh, among all those workflows, uh, this workflow will be the easiest, easiest one to control the shape. So before we start, uh, let's open a Maya uh, file and then what I need you to do is go create a cube and then uh, give it a edge ring and then maybe uh, drag that down and drag those two closer. You may wonder what am I doing, right? I'm doing the contour or the uh, segment of the hair strand, so like this. So now this is like a section of a hair. Okay, let me go uh, extrude from there and go backwards. Okay, and go down a little bit, rotate a little bit and extrude again. And do the same thing. And again, and do the same thing. Okay. And maybe again, just to make it go deeper. Okay. Let's grab those ones. Oh, before we do that, let's also uh, extrude from the other side, the other side, and extrude out and scale them in. But don't merge them, okay? Keep them separated. Now we have a uh, very simple here module that we can use in ZBrush to create the hair brush. So what I want to do now is go grab those ones. Okay, go to modify, oh, sorry, create, set, set. Let's grab the middle part. Press G to do that again, and then grab the tip, okay, press G again. So now I have three sets. Those, those three sides will be recognized as polygroup inside of ZBrush. Uh, before you export, don't forget to delete the history. Okay, so that's one of, the, one of the hair I wanted to create. So let's go to export selection and put it into a OBG file. So let's call this hair brush base and export selection. Now let me go create a uh, polyplane and then go um, delete, uh, oh actually let's just make it uh, 3, okay, and I don't need those two, actually uh, one segment in, in the middle wouldn't be bad. <laughs> so I'm creating another single layer one. But it's the same concept. Uh, so the end, extrude out, going down, extrude out, going down again. Uh, you want to make this part uh, bigger, so you uh, it's it's harder to actually uh, drag things too far away. Uh, uh, so it's it's easier to control. So one more extrusion wouldn't be bad. Okay. So this is another hair strand, so let me grab those and then go create, set, the middle one will be another side and the tape will be another side, okay, let's export this one again, uh, that's gonna be hairbrush thin base, okay, so now we have two hair brushes, Probably make this one bigger would be nice. <laughs> okay. Now what you what you can do is go to ZBrush and then start creating those brushes. Uh, oh, I already have one here. Let me delete that. 
So what you want to go for now is go to centers and then import uh, the hairbrush thing, uh, which is this one. Uh, make it facing you this way, and then go brush, create insert mesh, and new. And then you want to also go to strokes, which is over here. And then you want to turn on the curve mode. That way when you drag, you will actually uh, creating a curve. Now there are a couple problems. One of the problem is they're not connected. To change that, just go to brush and then go to the modifiers and turn on the wild point and stretch. Okay. And now if you drag again, you see now they're kind of connected. Uh, sometimes it's not in here. Uh, uh, I think that should be it. It's just not always true sometimes. Okay. Uh, all right. So you can also go to curve modifiers and then turn on the size. Uh, let's restart it. And then flip the size and then drag this middle one uh, up and maybe drag the tape up too. That way your brush will have uh, changing size down the way. So now you just created a very smooth uh, and fluid. Uh, hairbrush okay so let's uh, do the same thing for the other one so let's go to the uh, new cylinder import the hairbrush base this one is actually sticker and has volume but we're basically doing the same thing so brush create insert mesh and then go turn on curve mode and go to brush and have the weld point and stretch on and go to the curve modifiers and turn on size. Okay, now I can create this too. All right. So I have just created two set of uh, hairbrush, a single layer one and then a sticker one. Now let's go back to the hat and start adding that. The hat was exported from Maya, so I, I believe you know how to do that. Okay. Now if you click and drag, you can now create uh, hair strands like this. Uh, one of the problem is that because I make this one really high, like in my eye, I have this portion really high. So it's going to stand in there, which is not cool. One of the things you can do is go to brush and then go to the um, depths and then drag the depths down okay so that will force it to be embedded instead i have something there already so let me go to geometry and then delete hidden all right so now you see the hair is embedded and you see why i have that there because you can drag it around it's really hard to get up get out so it, so it's just make you easier to tweak uh, the shapes anyway So let's use those two brushes to start populating the hairs. So let's use the sticker one first, and then uh, let's make it even thicker. All right. And you can drag the curves around uh, to change their location or refine their shape uh, to whatever you want to be. Uh, Smooth 2 doesn't do a very good job though. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> I wonder if there is a smooth curve which doesn't have that. Anyway, so now we have one here. If you're happy with the shape you're getting, just click on the model to finish the creation. Okay. So let's keep doing that. Let's go create another one. Let's drag it inside a little bit more. And then tweak uh, the curve. Of course, you can uh, switch to move to. Uh, before you do that, click on the model to finish the creation, and then you can use any uh, ZBrush brush now to tweak the shape. So what you want to do is just use this to block out the model. I figure out this way. This way is actually cleaner and easier to control for you guys uh, instead of the. Uh, Fiber mesh way I showed you in class, but fiber mesh way have its benefits, so you can choose either way. Anyway, um, let me go uh, keep blocking my hairs. So one more here. Okay, and drag it around. 
to refine the shape. So your objective is blocking the entire skull with your hair strands and um, you don't want to create too much because it's going to be hard to control later on but you also don't want to create too little so the shape becomes too simple okay so enough amount of hairs like what i'm having right now should be good okay i'll drag that one in and then start moving it around to refine the shape I think fiber mesh is actually easier uh, to create a more fluid shape because uh, you're using groom brush and that's easier to create fluid shape. Moving to, move to is not as good as that one. Uh, you can smooth on that one too if you want it. Okay. Let me uh, use BIN to inflate this a little bit to give it more volume. Okay. So just keep doing that until you block out the entire head. You can also uh, mark out the bigger region first, like this. So that way you uh, it's, it's harder to uh, go last. Now what I actually want the hair to be thicker down there, so let me go back to the uh, hairbrush here, and I'm gonna drag this one up a little. Okay, don't want it to be thinning too much. Okay, that feels better. You can uh, move your cursor closer to the end of the previous curve, and then you can keep extending it if you wanted to do that. Okay. So this is one more hair strand. Let me just uh, drag it around. Like that. Now you also want to be, make sure that the entire contour of the hair looks nice and at least the way you want it to be. Uh, the brush is too big. Drag it in. Okay. So this way it could be uh, faster blocking things because um, fiber mesh is really not that easy to control, I guess. Um, See why I have this because you can never drag it too much. Okay, you can drag it up like that if you wanted to. That's why I make that one really deep. Let's refine the four. Uh, the uh, this one really carefully because this is actually in the front. I think it's gonna contribute. Uh, to the appearance of my character a lot. So I want to refine it uh, as much as I can. Okay. So most of the people are afraid of doing uh, realistic hair. Uh, it was really hard before, but I think in recent years uh, with new things like uh, uh, the X gene and stuff coming out and computer are getting faster, I don't see much trouble doing that. I actually did that in a short animation film a lot before. 
uh, at least uh, I did that in two animation animated films and they're all working out not films just commercial advertisement actually but they work out pretty nice uh, um, both um, me and the TD uh, we create uh, hairs for seven children character and they have all different hair style, styles and then we managed to create all those hairstyles uh, using Xgen and uh, the two I'm showed you in class so um, I don't think it's really hard to do as long as you have a little bit patient though anyway so let me just keep refining it Sometimes uh, my uh, sorry, ZBrush does this is because it's trying to match with the all the existing geometries, which uh, can be a headache. So what you can do though is you can Control Shift and click on the head, and then go to Split Hidden. That way you can split the hair you created earlier, and then you can keep working on new ones. That way you can uh, prevent it from trying to attach to other hairs you already have. Okay. So every time when I start doing a hair, I take a deep breath because I know it's, it's gonna take a little while. So maybe I will fast forward this part because they're all repetitive stuff. Uh, the key is that you refine the shape and it's better to have a reference which I don't have right now. <laughs> it's all imagining the stuff so it may be too symmetrical and stuff but I will refine it later. Uh, but anyway, uh, the technique is quite simple though. Just use those brushes we created to populate uh, hair. blocked everything but I do have some uh, opening part uh, what I can do though is go to the uh, poly group and then do a auto group here and then what you can do now is uh, uh, hold it down control and click on that that should mask others no, it's not <laughs> let's do that again okay does that I can hold it down control and drag to actually just duplicate that because I don't want to drag a new one it will gonna go over the ear it's gonna do something weird uh, some weird twisting so I'm just gonna duplicate the one I have there already uh, to represent uh, another one okay uh, I 
here I'm going to do the same thing. First, auto group, and then control click. You know what? I'm just going to make this one bigger. Oh. I think I did something uh, weird. Had to make ZBrush kind of crushed. Okay, uh, let me uh, pause it. I'll go back. Okay, sorry for the crash, but I reopened ZBrush. It actually gives me the uh, the model uh, without any uh, losing uh, work, so that's good. It's okay. ZBrush sometimes crashes. Uh, I used to call it a Z crash because of that, and but it's it's actually more much more stable now uh, than previous versions. So. What, I, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do is just make it wider to cover the ear. Okay. Go back to the head. And then I blocked out the hair, so the skull should already be blocked by the hair now, later on, when I create uh, the hair geometry, but there are something uh, more you want to add like detailed or smaller strands or even other variations you wanted to have um, But just to make things look nice, right? Let's merge down on the ones we already have and the head Let's also control shift and click on it go split hidden Okay, just merge all the hairs uh, into one geometry Okay now before we do any special smaller ones. Let's also just uh, drag things around to give the hair a good shape. Okay, I think that's really important that you uh, keep the big shape in mind and uh, don't worry about too much about the smaller shape yet. Let's make the big shape looks nice is something you cannot get away with. The air has to look good no matter how much smaller detail you're adding later on. It really doesn't matter if your primary shape are crap. Okay, so just tweaking the big shapes now. Okay, so I'm happy with it now. You can press D button to preview, uh, smooth, smooth preview it. I think I forget one here. <laughs> so let me go back, control click. I'll also control click on that one. Just gonna duplicate you. Okay. Rotate and then drag it back there, and probably just move a little bit. Okay. So now let's try to give it smaller details. And for smaller details, I'm going to use the other brush, and that's why I created the other brush. Uh, uh, oh. I actually lost that brush because I <laughs> Maya crashes, but I do have the files here. So all I need to do is uh, just go, um, which is this one. Okay. Uh, delete hidden to fix that. Let me just recreate my brush. So brush. Create insert mesh new and then uh, go struck and then curve turn curve mode on and cur curve modifiers flip it and then make it thicker in the middle and then the tip and choose size now go to brush and then another thing you want to do is underneath modifiers check on weld point and stretch that will. Uh, Yeah, I think I turn off tripods. I don't have tripods. I'm not sure why it's not doing that properly. <laughs> oh, maybe I didn't. Maybe it destroys the polygroup too. I think it's all messed up. <laughs> so let's uh, re import one instead of this one. Uh, so then it's my downloads and then hair base thing. This one do have the polygroup I needed. All right, brush, create, insert, mesh brush. Okay, and go to curve, turn on curve mode. Curve modifier is already there, just check on size. Okay, 
and then check on wild point and stretch and it will be good to go uh, one more little thing is you can go to the depths and then drag the depths down so it's embedded all right cool maybe i'm embedding it too much uh, but anyway let's try it go back to the head again now this time i'm gonna create smaller hair strands using my new thin hair brush okay oh this one is bricked Uh, for some reason, my middle part is uh, keep um, breaking. Okay, I think it's keep breaking, anyways. <laughs> uh, strip the overlap amount, maybe bigger, curve resolution higher. Okay. Oh, uh, the overlapping is maybe uh, shouldn't be there. Maybe just the curve resolution uh, can fix that. Yeah. Okay. Now I have the smaller brush working now, uh, and then I can tweak it by dragging it around. Now this one is easier to control because uh, you have just one thin layer of geometry, and it can do all sorts of crazy stuff with it uh, like for example here I can go uh, you know what it would be easier to just <laughs> redraw a new one sorry about that I'm kind of a little tired okay so one more here you see every workflow have its downsides like this one you have to draw on the face more or less to avoid uh, too much stretching to start with but as long as that one is okay then you can uh, now start tweaking it so i think i'm gonna give it a nice volume here can now see the other side you can go to the display properties and turn on the double that way you can see the other side it's easier, easier to manage stuff okay all right so i'm happy with this one now let me control drag to duplicate it and then just uh, start sculpting the second one I just duplicated. I kind of like the idea of having hair curling back a little bit and to the face, which looks uh, really nice. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do now. I have those redundant ones always happen to me like how uh, you did um, a split hidden before and then you control Z too much so the splitted ones goes back uh, which is not good you want to go delete hidden to fix that okay so, uh, let me draw a new one Maybe this one could be this direction okay so now there are detailed models I'm doing here uh, to give my hair more variation and characteristic. So this stage you can do as long as you want it to be. So I'm gonna maybe also first forward this part, uh, this refining part. As long as you know what I'm doing, they're all uh, repetitive stuff.
Alright, so I think I have enough little detail, but you can keep just refining that. Um, I actually I want to do something a little bit more career here, which is you know, uh, I want a braid here. I know you can do braid actually just in uh, hair strength, but maybe I can do that here directly. So what I'm gonna do here will be uh, go back to Maya, <laughs> and then I'm gonna create my own braid first. So go create a uh, thinner, which is this one. Okay, <clears throat> and then just give it a. Uh, 12 uh, or actually just sticks to make things simpler and drag it this way and then okay uh, that all right now combine them together and then let's just go uh, to the faces and make sure that out Yeah, and then uh, let's uh, drag it longer and then just uh, have more segments, which is this one, and then twist it. It's not twisting too much though. <laughs> I don't know why it's not twisting. So let's twist it manually then. <laughs> Alright, so I want to have this kind of braid there, uh, not super accurate, but you know, something similar. Okay. So, um, just making sure that they can, they can connect with each other from one side to the other. Maybe, uh, okay, let me see, uh, duplicate this one and drag it over. Uh, maybe here is where they can be connected. Okay, let's uh, combine them together. I'm going a little bit crazy though. <laughs> Shouldn't be needed to do this. And just thinking about the possibility uh, I can do. Oh, so what I want is actually just move one of them. Uh, so. Connect those two, but move this one only. Okay. So I'll grab that and move it down. Actually, that's good. other two let's do the same thing let's make them to be able to connect with each other uh, but you only move uh, one side because you want to keep that side the same uh, that way uh, you can actually infinitely uh, duplicate uh, this. Uh, the last one here, okay. Uh, so this is the one I'm moving it, I think. <laughs> so drag this over and maybe up. And then of course manually match it. So now I have this, and then uh, if I just uh, delete uh, this part, and then uh, duplicate it, I should be able to drag it to the other side, and they should be able to connect each other on the other side without any problem, because uh, that's what I'm matching here. Uh, 
think it would be better to have it merged here instead. Okay. I'm just, you know, having this start of that. Let's just try if that's working though. So, um, so that's the uh, that's the braid, and, and uh, it can connect itself from the beginning to the end uh, to here. And um, the beginning, let's just extrude out the beginning. Okay. I think I did one extra extrusion I shouldn't have. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. Maybe uh, twist more. Okay. Oh. I think I should twist this one more. Okay. Anyway, so what I'm trying to do is the beginning here. Uh, okay, and then here I can give it an end, which I think could be easier to do with a uh, poly. Oh, let's just let's just make it uh, maybe uh, extrude from here and make it slightly bigger. And extrude again, make it smaller. So I'm twisting to the wrong direction. Should be uh, this direction instead. Okay, one more extrusion. So this is the end. It's getting a little bigger. <laughs> All right. Hopefully this will work. I actually never experimented this. So select that and then go to create set set. Okay, that's gonna be the end of that, and then those are the middle ones. Okay. Create set set, and then the final two segments uh, will be uh, the end so set so now we have three sets just making sure they are all correct oh, not that one actually so set seven are those in the front okay and then uh, set six oh see seven uh, set eight are those ones okay and those ones in the middle uh, I didn't give them a set actually. So let's do that. Um, the idea is still have these three sets, and then I use the three sets to create a uh, brush in ZBrush. So uh, export selection as braid brush. Okay. And then go back to ZBrush, and then. Uh, Go to the similar again and import the braid brush, which is this one. Make it facing you this way and then brush, create insert mesh, new, and then you want to go curve and turn on curve mode. Go back to brush and turn on the triparts, weld point and stretch. That way I should be able to drag a braid uh, like that. Uh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> seems like it's working. Um, I'm not quite sure though because it's this is a little experimental which I shouldn't have that in a tutorial if I'm just experimenting don't want to waste your time but let's see um, split hidden okay go back to the face and let me uh, just do one braid from the back to the front it's too small Okay, it's still not big enough. Let's turn off the dynamic. Uh, 
it's kind of small. Let's go to the uh, curve modifiers and make the curve um, bigger here, maybe. Uh, size on. Okay. I can tweak it myself. Uh, just drag it. Uh, select up right from the back uh, and then gradually go forward. it's done like that so now that here I have a little <laughs> braid from the back which could be true though I think uh, some people do that okay anyway enough of the playing here let's uh, let's see if those are all working uh, so um, oh and of course I shouldn't have the uh, those one here <clears throat> go uh, delete hidden because I already have those separated to a new up to now. Okay, <laughs> split hidden. Now I have all the sub twos, uh, all the here sub twos uh, here. Let me combine them together so I merge. Um, Save it. Go uh, merge, merge them. Okay, just keep doing that until they're all together. And then uh, give them all individual groups. So uh, underneath polygroups and uh, all the group. Okay. Now you see there's something wrong with uh, some of the connections, like they're not quite connected, <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, we can combine them later. Uh, oh, we can try this though. Uh, underneath the uh, geometry, uh, there is uh, a weld which is here. I will weld the point if they're kind of close. See that subtle movement there? And then if we do um, auto group again, it should be able to fix that to make them all the same group. Okay. So great. Now let's export this and uh, go back to Maya. Okay, export. Let's call this a uh, air geometry. Okay. Now uh, go back to Maya. Uh, now this one, the other one, and then file import the uh, downloads, which is the uh, braid brush. This one. Oh, sorry. The hair geometry import. So that's our hair geometry. Just in case anything goes wrong, uh, let's grab all the geometry here. Go to component mode, grab all the vertices, go shift and right mouse button, merge vertices, merge vertices, use a very small threshold and then apply. That will try to merge uh, not connected uh, vertex again. So that could help uh, if that's uh, wrong. Okay. Oh, yeah, like uh, some of the things are actually wrong here, like they're not actually connected to the main body, which uh, could be something I didn't do correctly. I need to fix that. So combine them together and merge vertices. Okay, fix that one. Combine and then merge versus delay stray. Okay, this one combine and merge versus. Oh, okay. I think I did it too fast. I actually have a lot of trouble on this uh, one here, on this last braid here. <laughs> I got a little excited about this. So. Anyway, let's combine them together and merge versus. That will fix everyone and we can separate them again. 
on parent and delete that out group. Okay, now we have all the geometries to represent our hair, and hopefully they're all okay. It's, it's not never guaranteed, so you may need to fix uh, some of the things down the way. Even with those geometries, they're actually good enough for like uh, game uh, geometry because you have all the variations and smaller ones. Uh, you can just give them texture. But to convert that into actual hair, you can grab all the geometries and use the plugin I gave you before, which is called the uh, GMH2. Okay, just drag that in. Uh, this is not a free software, uh, a free plugin, so you may want to actually purchase it uh, if you really want to use it. Uh, it's only uh, $50, so not that expensive though. <laughs> so now let's uh, just try it. Grab one of the models and create GMH style, actually. Let's call it uh, higher. All right, and then select the model and apply GMH style. I will apply there. Uh, sometimes uh, the direction is wrong, so you want to rotate it. And it's wrong again, reverse it. Okay, that fix it. Uh, of course, you don't want it to do it one by one. So uh, let's see, that's. Uh, let me drag that one down. So let's do that um, on multiple ones. Oh, come on. <laughs> Just need to drag it back. Uh, oh, now there. Okay, so let's grab those ones. Okay, and then apply GMH style. Uh, if you're confident with your uh, machine's performance, maybe you can grab them out. But sometimes uh, it's gonna take a long time to calculate. And I'm afraid I'm afraid that it may runs out of memory. So I just select a few and then do that and then another few and do that until I have everyone converted into hair system. Uh, the hair system being converted to is Maya native in hair. So um, that means that even without this plugin, uh, everything should work. Okay, now I have all those converted to hair. Uh, surprisingly, those ones are all okay. See the the hair they created are all in the correct direction, but the other ones, the flat plane ones, needs to be fixed. So let me grab those ones that are wrong, which are those ones. I hope there is a way to actually make them correct in the first place, but I, I haven't found out the reason uh, why yet. So I'm just gonna do those manually then. That's one of them too. Okay, so those flat ones uh, needs to be rotated. And then reversed. <laughs> but don't worry, uh, that one cost more uh, history. The only history is uh, Maya convert the polygon into subdivision kind of geometry is like uh, modify convert a polygon to subdiv sub subdivision something and then after that it converts uh, that subdivision to numbers using this command and then after that it can kind of samples the nervous curve some nervous curve from that nervous uh, converted and then use that to create hair that's the basic idea of this plugin okay uh, so those ones are all done. You can go grab those uh, in the list here. Okay, had them. And let's keep doing the last few ones. Uh, let's do those. Apply a GMH style. <laughs> those ones, I think they are... Uh, oh, and got ignored. Some of the ones are having trouble. Okay. So I have to fix that. I don't know why I ends up with an n gun there, but it should be an easy fix. Uh, let's see this one. Have an n gun, which is weird. I'm weird. How, how do you even have an gun? Let me just flatten those 
uh, vertices, maybe that can fix it. Uh, normally this shouldn't be happening. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, maybe I end up with a triangle here. Not sure. Seems like I'm okay with that. Uh, just double check. Go uh, mesh cleanup. Select face with more than four sides. I don't have gun here anymore. So uh, let's convert this again. Okay, it still contains some triangles on it. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Uh, let me delete maybe the bottom faces. Oh, can I even select faces? I think some glitches are uh, having happening here. Uh, let's save the file. Wrong. Okay, and then let's go uh, reopen Maya maybe. So this one is supposed to be okay. I don't know why I have troubles. Uh, let me try that again. Try that again. Okay. Um, apply geometry style. Okay. So something is wrong with this one. I don't really care. Delete it. I still have other ones, so I think I can go copy one of those and just replace uh, that one. <laughs> I really don't know what's happening with that one. Maybe Maya is just being uh, super picky about stuff. So I'm just gonna do that myself by duplicating one. So this shouldn't happen. I'm sure it's something with something wrong with uh, Maya. Or, uh, yeah. So grab that then, and then uh, let's convert this one. So apply geometry style. Uh, that should work. Okay. Um, now my braid. Hopefully they will work too. Otherwise I'm just wasting my time. <laughs> Do that. Looks like they're doing something. Okay, so this one is okay. That one is okay. The other one is all. This one uh, is the wrong direction so I just need to rotate it. Okay, and let's see what's what's happening here. Huh. This one is weird, let's uh, delete that. Oh, I didn't merge the vertices here correctly. See, uh, some problem could happen. But yeah, this, uh, this time it will work then. So uh, let's do that. All right, now my braid also works. Now let me go grab all the verses, uh, all the uh, sh uh, shapes and then add them. So now I have a complete hair system all applied um, from the geometry I defined earlier. Now you see the, the workflow, the power of this workflow is that you have full control of the shape because everything you model in ZBrush will be uh, represented by hair uh, right here and you can do anything here now to refine it like uh, you know, if you don't like the position of that, you can drag it. I can drag that one too. See, so it's it's really just more intuitive to be able to tweak the hair using a modeling way uh, instead of uh, doing a hair get like what uh, the uh, uh, shape and hair cut hair cut do or uh, the uh, uh, X gene do. I don't know. I don't mean they are bad. It's just not as intuitive at least to me, 
but they're powerful by any means. <laughs> so if you want to do that, um, please try that. Uh, I think Xgen has great potential uh, to be really good. <laughs> Just takes some time. It's it's kind of a little unstable. In earlier versions, when I was experimenting with uh, Xgen, but it does work. Um, and it works in real production. Uh, I have seen them work uh, without any trouble. But I think that also takes time to get used to. You need to know some coding properly to actually use it full power though. Uh, but you can use its modifiers to do simple things uh, like uh, give them clump and maybe cut them or do you know those kind of things so I definitely try that if you're curious on uh, other ways of doing hair there are always uh, multiple ways so right now what I'm doing is try to tweak the hair shape I'm getting here you see the hair updates because of the history I mentioned before polygon to sub D subdivision to nervous nervous to nervous curves and then nervous curves to in hair and all those uh, histories are kept uh, intact so uh, that, that's why you can now start dragging things around uh, to refine the shape of the hair So um, let's do a render and see how they looks like. I need to add those geometries. And then go Arnold, Arnold render view. That's because I'm using Arnold render as the default render. So that's what I'm getting here. OK. Uh, a couple of issues here. Uh, one of the issues is that uh, the hair are really thick. OK. Another issue is um, they are really parallel and don't really have enough variation so they look a little bit fit, uh, fake too uh, I don't really like uh, one of the things I see there which is this one looks like it has a big gap between other ones so I'm gonna drag it closer okay maybe that one too that's the variations I tried to do earlier all right Let's use our node preview. Okay, so it feels much better now. All right, so uh, let's try to do some more variation on it. Uh, the first thing I want to do is change their uh, size to make them thinner. Uh, to do so, you can go um, edit uh, the uh, GMH style. Uh, and then there are a couple of things you can change in the attribute editor, like uh, the um, um, let's see, higher system shape can change the let's see the size. Uh, yeah, the hair width. Okay, so if you change that to 0 0.05, the hair will be much thinner. Let's try and see if that's true. Now you see the hair becomes thin now. Okay, so it feels more like the uh, real size of a hair should be. You can even make it even thinner, um, uh, depending on what kind of uh, final shape you want it to be. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So um, another thing is the size of the clumps. So you can change that to two. That will make them even thicker. I mean, the entire clumps could be uh, thicker. So now if you go um, render, you see they becomes bigger. Okay, if you wanted that. I think I just need to be a little bigger. Okay. Now other things uh, like uh, the hair per clump is how much hair you want it to be. Uh, you can drag it lower, so you have lesser hair if you want it to be like that, which is not good. Uh, just so you know that that's the amount of the hair. 
So, uh, let's see the, uh, I think the default setting is 10 or so. Okay, now hair with scale is the scale of the hair uh, along its length. So you can drag this all the way down, that will make the tape really thin. You can also tweak the clamp width, uh, so you can take it the beginning of uh, the beginning width of the clamp and then the middle part, and then the, the tip. You can make the tip spread out if you wanted to do that, or make the tip really thin. Okay, so you have full control of those uh, little detail. <laughs> okay. Now you can also twist the clamp a little bit. And then you can create a sub clamping to give them like a secondary, very uh, uh, set secondary groups, and then give them some randomness if you wanted to do that. Okay, uh, and you can curl it, of course, to give it some curling and curve frequency to make it curl more or less. Which, if you want to have like a curly hair, you can do that. Uh, notice that when you do the curve, you see the hair is kind of like having a very hard edge. Uh, this is because uh, the hair doesn't have enough segment, which is this one. Uh, you, can, you need to crank that up to something higher to support uh, the curve, the curling of the hair. Okay, so uh, let me drag it down a little. I, I I don't really want it to be curling too much, so just a few curl to make it like not quite straight. Okay. I don't quite like that one. Let's drag it in. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's how you tweak it. Uh, there are a lot of other things you can do, like noise. They give it some noise on it, uh, which is kind of like curling, but maybe it's not like really rotating or twisting it, but just give it uh, bumpiness on it. And uh, that's hair color and stuff. Uh, the dynamic part, like attraction scale, that's something maybe you can experiment later. Well, what it actually does is trying to uh, make the make the hair. Are match with the shape of the geometry, which is the ones we're having here now. And uh, the higher the value is, oh, I think I already did that. So the higher, the higher uh, this value is, uh, uh, this one is, and then uh, the more shape it will maintain when you have uh, dynamic. If you play the animation now, you see they're actually dynamic. All right. Um, but you can have the start curve attraction to something really high that will try to match them with uh, the shape of the geometry underneath it. So that way uh, you will not go too far. And uh, that's the, the graph to control like how much do you want, want uh, how much attraction do you want it to have along the length of the curve. So if you drag this all the way up, that will make it even more stiff. So it will maintain the shape more. See that? Let's change fr uh, change the frame rate. So now the hair will keep their shape more uh, when you have dynamic. So it's a dynamic thing. Uh, this is one of the things I like this workflow. It's because uh, the dynamic here can be controlled by uh, can be controlled or kept to the minimum if you don't want too much and just want a little wiggling. You can just have this. Uh, oh, sorry, not that. Have the uh, attraction here really high and the value here really high that will try to keep the hair all uh, match with the shape of the geometry you give it. Okay, so that's that. Uh, finally, material. Oh, so one more little thing if you wanted to do, which is the secondary geometry uh, or hair system. So if you grab all the hair system, uh, hair geometry now, and then uh, you can, let's just do this on one of the ones, this one, and then you can apply a secondary geometry style, you need to create one first. Here, second. Okay. And apply, select that, and then apply secondary geometry style. Okay. That will give you the, uh, another one. Now, why do you need another one? Well, um, sometimes you need some uh, smaller hair strands. Uh, I mean, more hair strands are floating around. So what you can do is for this new one, 
you can make the uh, hair actually really low so you don't need that much hair uh, so uh, hair per clown maybe just one okay but you can make the uh, the uh, the uh, clump size which is this one bigger so it's spread out a little bit okay and then you can even go do other stuff like uh, curling okay, and give it some frequency like around it so that way you can have like a secondary floating around hair system around it to break up the uh, the smoothness of the hair uh, that's just one of the ways uh, you do uh, the things you do uh, when you want to have more natural looking hair uh, because you know they're not perfect they should have some hair that, that is just floating around uh, the main uh, hair group okay so that's why you need a secondary one if you really want that uh, you can just pick a few ones and apply that or you can uh, just apply that on every individual one if you really wanted that um, but I think they're light enough because uh, you only added a few hair on it anyways so let's try to do that on every geometry okay the tutorial is getting really long <laughs> so uh, I will wrap that up after this um, by introducing how to apply material okay so now I'll have uh, those secondary hair now they should look uh, better and then to really apply a hair uh, material you want to go to edit Maya here and then go to the uh, Arnold because I'm using Arnold if you're using Viri you should be able to go attribute add attribute Viri hair material that's how you do that in Viri uh, in Arnold it already have a have a AA section for that you just need to check on override hair and then go hair shader and then choose the Arnold hair shader which is AI hair if you do that and then do a render you see now the uh, hair material will be changed to the Arnold material oh I, I only apply that on the secondary one <laughs> so you see the difference right so let me uh, stop this and then grab the first one okay added my hair override hair again and let, let me go uh, to the material editor and uh, go grab that AI hair <coughs> and then drag it in to apply the same hair system hair material to the to both of the hair systems I have earlier which it kind of freezes down here I hope ho hopefully it will be okay <laughs> oops I think it, it freezes so yeah Maya is doing all crazy stuff now uh, let me uh, let me pause it I will reopen my I, I, I have auto save oh oh it's actually it's actually uh, okay now oh no 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 it's it's it's, it's crashed so uh, cancel that so I got crushed I just reopened it I don't think I lose any uh any history <laughs> so sorry about that uh, I'm a little tired Maya is tired too <laughs> and anyway so I do have the hair uh, AI hair here it's already assigned so let's just keep working on that uh, we now have one assigned just go to the node editor find this AI hair and then apply that on another hair system which is the first one drag it in to the hair shader and then if now you do a render view you will see all the hair being assigned with the correct hair system okay Uh, the correct hair material <laughs> sorry now you can do a lot of things like uh, with the material like the uh, the color of course I don't know why the default setting is white color which is weird but I guess where uh, white hair is cool <laughs> too I like white haired people this just feels so different well, let's change that to a red hair like what I uh, have before in the previous render uh, so here and then uh, maybe the color can be also bright you can change the glossiness to make it shinier or lesser shiny okay super shiny which is weird change it back angular shift is kind of like changing the uh, uh, like the uh, what's this called the, the 
uh, the asymmetrical reflection, like the different direction are different. Uh, that word just slipped out of my memory. <laughs> anyway, so you can have transmission to make it slightly translucent, uh, which is also kind of cool if you have a backlight. It's going to make it uh, looks like it's subsurface scattering or so. Uh, all right, so this is the hair system. Uh, I hope you guys uh, like this workflow. Um, uh, it's not the only workflow, but it's the best workflow if you want to give uh, have full control of every individual hair strand. Uh, of course, you can go crazy about uh, little strands around the hair to break up. Uh, because I think I'm still having like too even outline of the hair, so it looks like um, uh, it's not organic enough. So if I'm gonna make it better, I'm gonna go back and go ZBrush and then create some smaller strands there, or even just tweak it here. Uh, it won't update here though because the hair system uh, is kind of different. And another thing I would do, if possible, is that um, I will actually go um, uh, create multiple layers of hair, not just all growing from the top, of course, uh, some of them are supposed to be growing from the side. Oh, and material-wise, uh, I forget if I mentioned that or not, if you're using uh, Viray, uh, you want to go to the hair system and then go attribute add very hair material override or something to override the material but uh, after that everything is supposed to be the same okay all right thanks for watching and i'll see you next time